A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this season, it depends on, for this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to abort, divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's really no wonder why God chose Joseph to be the husband of Mary and the foster father of Jesus. We see two of his great attributes in this reading today, this gospel passage. And I think uh, the first one that we would look at is love. Love, the profound love that Joseph had for Mary. 
she's found with child, they haven't lived together, they're engaged, she know, he knows he's not the biological father of this child, so what is a, a, a person to think? He also knows at the same time that, the, that what would happen to a woman in those days if she's found with child before marriage, she would be stoned to death, stoned to death. He knew that. And he, you know, what, he, what did he think happened? How did this happen? It's not him. He feels probably betrayed. Yet, he loves her so much still that he's just going to be quiet about it. He doesn't want anything to happen to her. He loves her so deeply no matter what. That's incredible love. That's Joseph. Then, of course, the other attribute I would say is faith and prayer. Faith and prayer. So what happens as you heard, as you know, an angel comes to him, but it's in a dream. He's sleeping. You know, how many people would believe, first of all, that an angel came to them in a dream? Look, it's a dream. And what the angel said, you know, it's the Holy Spirit who has come upon Mary, not another man. It's the Holy Spirit, like far-fetched. I mean, who would believe this? Joseph. Joseph would believe this because he was a man of great faith. He trusted God in everything, and clearly he was a man of prayer. This wasn't just a sudden thing, and he, suddenly he believes all this. No, this has been probably a gradual thing in his life, through his own prayer life, his righteousness, his faith in God, his trust in God, brought him to this point of being able to say, okay, I believe, I believe this. I believe this dream. A man of great faith, a man of devout and great prayer. No wonder why God chose him to be the mother of the blessed mother, uh, the father of the blessed mother and the foster father of Jesus, to take care of Jesus all of it through his childhood, to teach him the ways of faith, the ways of love even, with Mary. He was the one, and we honor him today. So today, as we honor St. Joseph, the father of Jesus, the mother of Mary, let us also think about uh, our own personal fathers, whether our biological fathers, or if we were adopted, or our grandfathers, godfathers, people, people who have shown us faith, who have taught us about faith, or people who have just shown us the way in life, um, and we found faith one way or another. Um, let us give thanks to them and ask for God's choicest blessings to be upon them, whether they're here on earth or with him already in heaven.